I would like to just tell you a couple of short stories and we'll draw maybe a couple of lessons from them. Uh, as I came in, Mike Bloomberg was talking and he, uh, he talked about immigrants and I echo his remarks. Uh, but I would, I would like to tell you of two women uh, that each sold a business to Berkshire Hathaway uh, to me, actually, for many, many, many millions of dollars. Both of them started with $2,500. By a coincidence, it was the exact same amount. It was everything they had in the world. And one of them was a woman who landed in Seattle in 1917, couldn't speak a word of English, had a tag around her neck. The tag said, uh, Fort Dodge, Iowa, the Red Cross got her to Fort Dodge where she was reunited with her husband who had come to the country a couple of years earlier. And she lived in Fort Dodge for two years and as she put it, she felt like a dummy. She couldn't pick up the language. She couldn't learn a word. And so she decided, she and her husband decided to move to Omaha. So they came to Omaha in 1919 and there she found a small colony of Russian Jews, so she started feeling more at home. And then as her oldest daughter went to school, she would come home, this daughter, Frances, and she would teach her mother the words she would learned in school that day. And this woman, Rose Blumpkin, spent 20 years saving money, bringing first her siblings over, her mother and father, $50 at a time. She sold used clothing to do it. She had four children during this period. And by 1937, after 20 years, she'd saved $2,500. She went to Chicago and she bought what she could of furniture. Her dream had always been to open a furniture store. And this woman without, who had never gone to school one day in her life with $2,500 but with the same spirit that the people in this room had about having a dream and working to accomplish that dream, she built a business which she <clears throat> sold to me in 1983 for $60 million approximately and which, which did a billion and a half dollars worth of business last year. <clears throat> the fourth generation is working in that business. This woman, Rose Blumpkin, lived, well, she, she worked for me until she was 103. And then she, I'm not, then, then she retired and she died the next year, which is a lesson to all of Berkshire's managers that <laughs> premature retirement, you know, not, you can't tell what's going to happen. But Mrs. B, with her $2,500, one further fact about her, she could not read or write and she went into a furniture business and she didn't bring anything in unique in furniture, but she br brought a determination to succeed. She knew she could outwork anyone else. She knew that she cared about her customers. She worked at very low gross margins, but she built this incredible business. Her little girl started school, Frances. Frances would come home at night and teach her mother the words she learned in school that day. That's how this woman, Rose Blumpkin, learned the English language, but from her, from her daughter from kindergarten on, teaching her the words. She brought seven siblings over from Russia, one at a time, 50 bucks. Every time she saved 50 bucks, she sold used clothing and other works. She got her seven siblings over, her mother and father, and by 1937, 16 years after she got here, she saved $500. She got on a train, went to Chicago, to the American Furniture Mart, which was this huge, impressive thing. She had this, she was smart as hell, but she thought like a peasant in a way. And she saw this building and she decided to name her company the Nebraska Furniture Mart. She went in and bought $500 worth of, uh, she bought about $2,000 worth of uh, merchandise. All the way back to Omaha, she worried because she thought, I owe $1,500. And she only had a $500 equity. So she got to Omaha. She took the bed, the sofa, the refrigerator out of her own home to sell 
fast so she could get the money so she could pay on time. She took that business and built it from that start. No one would sell to her. She went into court four times because they tried to, the carpet manufacturers tried to keep her from selling at a discount. And she went into court and told the judge, because she figured out ways to buy this stuff in various nefarious ways from other, had other people buy it for her. And she said, look at, I pay $3 a yard for this carpet. Brandeis sells it for six ninety eight. She says, I sell it for three ninety eight. Just tell me, judge, how much you want me to rob people. She defended herself. Papers wrote it up. The judge bought carpet from her the next day. I mean, it was, it was marvelous. <laughs> Brandeis isn't selling anymore. They were the huge department store in Omaha. She put everybody out of business. And the punchline, she worked till she was 103. She sold me the business when she was 89. And she didn't have, she didn't have an audit. I went out to see her on one afternoon. I took a check out with me and I, and because I knew she wanted to do something. And I said, Mrs. B, here's the money. I said, I don't need an audit. Just tell me whether you owe any money. She said, I've never owed any money since I owed those guys back in 1937. And she said, it's all free and clear. She'd never seen a balance sheet. She didn't know what accounting terms meant, but she understood the nature of the business. And I told her, I said, I'd rather have, I'd rather have your word you know, than an audit from every one of the big six or big eight or whatever they were at the, number, at the time of the top auditing firms. And, and she worked till she was 103. She died at 104. She had three siblings at her funeral. I mean, those are some genes. Her son works there now. He's 82 or three, and the three sisters are all alive. But the punchline is she couldn't read or write. This woman could not read or write. If you told her this room was 68 feet by... 43, she would tell you how many square yards it was like that. She never went to school a day in her life. She would tell you how, how much that was at 598 a yard. She'd add the tax. She'd knock off something because she liked your looks. And that would be it. And that, that's, you know, that is the, the, that, you can't beat that, you know. And, and you can't replicate that at General Motors. You can't institutionalize that. The, the person who brings that kind of drive to a business and does it day after day and thinks about their customer. Uh, and that's all she did. Can't, and well, she raised four kids in the process too, but 